Okay, today Little Woods Ireland supporting both Camogie and Hurling for the fifth year running launched the Little Woods Ireland Camogie League Finals and the All Ireland Senior Hurling Championship as part of their 2021 Style Meets Substance campaign. Partnering with Little Woods Ireland for the launch were Kilkenny's Miriam Walsh and Kilkenny's Porrick Walsh. Folks, you're very welcome to the show. How are you getting on? All oh, good, great. No, thanks for having us. So, Mary, Mary, what's it been like doing media with your cousin today? Yeah, look, it's been good. Um, yeah, Porg's good. He's laid back. He keep me at, at my ease. Yeah. What she is... took a few wrong turns around Dublin, so she did. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, was try- it was hard to keep into him at times. <laughs> well, I was thinking that you're, you've, you've been, are, are you in separate buildings or what? Because I, I know that you grew up, what, a stone's throw from one another? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're well, we're in the same building, just in different rooms here. Right, but, okay. Uh, yeah, we're only, um, Miriam lives only down the road from me, so um, we know each other very well. How did that work as kids then? I presume that was just this hotbed of uh, brilliant after-school games or whatever it may be at, at year age, because you'd be not too uh, dissimilar when it comes to your ages, I presume, whatever fields were around there, some epic games would have happened, I dare say. Yeah, yeah, there was pl- plenty of games that we would have been calling down to Miriam's house. She would have been calling up to us and all the, the brothers, sisters and cousins all and neighbours all playing matches against each other. And we didn't go too easy on each other. The girls probably hit us harder than we hit them now. So <laughs> it. But um, yeah, I can still remember walking walking past Miriam's house and seeing her seeing her out training herself in the garden and setting up ops and courses and drills for herself. So um, yeah, they're, they're great memories to have. And do, do you have siblings, Miriam? Um, yeah, I do. I have two brothers and I have one sister. They both would have played, you know, at school and club. Um, so, you know, we all took part in these uh, matches out in the back garden. You know, they were, they were great. <laughs> and I presume that obviously you needed to put in a few extra yards or something if you were setting up obstacle courses for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was great childhood memories to have, you know, playing. We are just... So lucky to be only a field away from Oryx household. So no we great battles and they always ended up in tears some days in the bar, but we didn't we, we didn't hold grudges. It, it stood to us in the long run. <laughs> so h- how big are these games? Or how many people are we talking here? That's true, you'd have you could you could have anywhere between five and ten people really, depending on who wanted to play on the day. So right. So there's plenty of us and some people took days off different days, um, but yeah, there was plenty of us anyway. That, that's incredible, because like, even when you think about the last year and stuff like that, I, I guess having that sort of setup is just such an advantage. Maybe you didn't appreciate it because there was no COVID, you could get to your GEA pitches anyway and, and play your games, but to have that sort of resource, I'm sure you didn't look at it that way, but that sort of competitiveness surely brought you both on as, as a Camogie player and as a hurler. Yeah, definitely. When you at the time, sure, you were just having a bit of crack and having a bit of fun. But now that we're older and you're looking back on it, you can um, definitely see the benefits of it. And um, yeah, they're just they're great memories to have. Um, it's great to have cousins and and neighbours so close to you there that you can just call down to any time you want and and play a bit of hurling or whatever, a bit of camogie. Um, so yeah, it, we're 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 very lucky. Um, just Tyrone's just a very small place, and if you if you don't play hurling, there's not much else to do there. So. Um, so yeah, we're just we're, we're delighted to have that opportunity or younger to be able to do that. Miriam, when it comes to your own training nowadays, how far removed would it be from the simple skills you were showing on that obstacle course, for example? Yeah, look, I suppose they were all just simple skills. Um, you know, like running with the strike and the ball on the run. They were kind of little skills that I I needed to practice and. I was kind of one-sided for years and, you know, you only get away with that as far as under 16. So it's important just to practice everyday skills of, you know, hitting the the ball off your left and your right side. And at the moment, thankfully, I'm not quite sure what side is my weaker one. You know, it just kind of comes natural to you when you practice all your skills. And yeah, it's good to me, I suppose. Did somebody tell you that when you were getting up to under 16s that you need to work on the opposite side here or was it just something that you picked up on yourself? Yeah, no, exactly. You know, you'd have your coaches telling you what skills, I suppose that from club level, you know, you'd have good coaches telling you what skills to work on. And I was uh, my weak, I was always weak on, on on my right side. So I just kept on practicing and practicing. And, you know, thankfully now I can hit it on both sides. <laughs> What about yourself, Porik? What age were you when you got competent at both sides? 
Oh yeah, I, I was similar enough now. I remember um, Dick Welsh, our former chairman of the village, came up to me when I was about um, when I was about eleven and told me that I need to start practicing on, on the other side if I want to uh, if I want to start making teams and stuff. And when I was in sixth class, then I remember my brother Martin told me that I'd have to be able I'd have to be able to hit off both sides if I want to get onto the team in Kieran. So um, so I was probably I was probably late at developing hitting off my other side as well. But uh, thank God the the two of them told me that when I was younger. And how simple is your training then, Project, when it comes to inter-county level? Because uh, Paddy Andrews was saying that the other day that the, the dubs, uh, during their quest for five and six in a row, people think that they have all these fancy things going on in training when actually it's very simple. It's just very skill-based. Are you guys the same? Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah, very similar now. It's, trains are going, there's, there's no point overcomplicating over trainings. Like, you know, hurling is, 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 is a skillful game, but it's, it's the basic skills that you need, to be, you need to be good at if you want to perform at the highest level. So, so, um, so I think it, keeping your trainings nice and simple and just focusing on, on them basic skills and making sure you're as good as you can be on them, that's the most important thing to be able to do. Do you feel that there is an added emphasis on skills alone and uh, kind of less of an emphasis maybe on some of the strength and conditioning elements of things this year in particular, given the high scoring nature of the games and the free flowing hurling that we've seen? Um, yeah, because look, you would have had, you had plenty of time there during COVID when you're on your own to, mm. to work away on your, your strength and condition, that kind of stuff. So once you went back and trained, what, what everyone needed was, was, to, was to develop their skills and to improve on their basic skills for such strike and catch and all that kind of stuff. So definitely, um, I think that was the most important thing once we went back training that we'd we we spend enough time running and all that kind of stuff. So it was to get back at the at, get back at the skills and get back at get back at hurling. Um, when we when we had the chance to go back training. How did that work for you then, Miriam? Obviously, I presume there was a bit of celebrating to do over the course of the winter. So, uh, how, how early did you get back into the gym, and and how much of that was left? Maybe a little bit late in the day before things got back underway this this season. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and it, you know, it, or it doesn't feel like that long ago when we were, you know, in December playing the All Ireland. But we plenty of time to work on our, our strength and conditioning and our fitness. In the meantime, I know we were working uh, like on our own or whatever individually, and it was some weeks were tough to stay motivated and all. But I'm just delighted to be back as part of the team now, and you know, you're kind of nearly cherishing the moments a bit better now, and. You're just taking your chances when they they come, so it's great to be back now after the long break. But you know, uh, obviously we worked on skills. You know, obviously our managers told us what we needed to work on. In the meantime, we'd such such of a long break to work on different skills and also, you know, we, we kind of we're back now and we're just delighted to be back. Is the psychology of this year different to the previous? four seasons when you're very much chasing the crown do you go in with a different mentality as defending champions yeah exactly like um i suppose there's there's you know everyone's out for revenge now everyone wants to target us now that we we were the champions from last year but no look we try not to put too much pressure on ourselves we just go out and and play like it's any other match but i know this year now this year is going to be our year where we have to work as hard as as we possibly can to regain our title and, and that's it. Can you take any anything that you can learn from 2017 at all, maybe, and how you defended that title from, from 2016? Or was that just a season that even if you hadn't won the previous year, wouldn't have gone your way anyway? Yeah, look, you know, we, we'd won in 2016 and then we didn't go as well in 2017, but... Look, we've we've learned so much over the, the past few years and I suppose the psychological part is a huge thing as well. Look, we stuck together and we stuck at it and, you know, we didn't give up after that real tough defeat in 2017. We we got back as champions last year. So it's just like, look, you're, you're, everyone wants to win at the end of the day, but um, no, we just, we're working hard and we're in a good place. So hopefully now this year we can, we can retain the title. Podrick, what about you? You were obviously part of the Kilkenny team that won in 2014 and 2015. Well, was there a different view in 2015, uh, almost a, a heightened awareness of your rivals given you were reigning champions? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, as Miriam said, that once you're all earning champions, everyone wants to beat you, you know. So there's definitely that added pressure when you come back. But I think um, I think every year we come back very, very hungry to, to, win, to, to win the championship. And 
I think the, the, the best way to do that is have to have a very competitive panel and to keep you on your toes and that no one, no one is safe in their own position. Um, so I think that's the most important thing. If you can keep that competitiveness in your own panel, then you'll have no problems with keeping the hunger to, to try to get back up to the top. Yeah, that, that's what all the defending champions seem to say. Like, well, Did you notice anything from even the, the experience that Brian Cody would have had in, in the 2000s, having gone back to back to back to back? Was there anything that he brought to the table there uh, from his experience when it, when it came to actually defending your crown and, and winning it back to back? Yeah, I think it just comes that when you, when you start out the following year, it's just a clean slate, really. You try to forget about the following year. It's a new year and you're not champions anymore, you know, and you, you want to get back up to the top. And in order to do that, you have to take on everyone that you're going to be playing. Um, so I think that's the most important thing. Brian was very good at that, at keeping us on our toes. And then I suppose having a, having a strong panel adds to that because, you know, there's a lad chomping at the bit to take your place. So that keeps the whole thing competitive. So I think that's the most important thing is just to, to have a clean slate and, and, and take the new year as it comes. Do you feel that at the moment with this Kilkenny panel that in a very good way, your position would be under threat and everybody's position is under threat? Yeah, absolutely. Every train you go out and you can see lads who are playing in, in similar positions to you and you're, you can see how well they're playing and, 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 and that puts pressure on you because if you, want to, if you want to hold your position, you need to perform better than them. And if they're going to perform better than you, then Brian has shown in the past, he'll give the jersey to lads who are hurting the best in training. So um, there's always that edge to it in training and it, it's a great thing to have. But I was just going to ask, are, are those training matches at the moment, uh, is there a serious edge to them? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, there has to be because there's only a couple of weeks in the championship. We had match um, week after week there, and lads were eager to get into get onto the team. So there's definitely, um, definitely, lads are definitely mad to get in and get get a jersey there. So um, the thing is nice and competitive. So hopefully it'll stand to us come championship. Absolutely, only uh, only a couple of weeks away at this point. Uh, I wanted to chat to you both about some of the spectacles you've been involved in recently. Two brilliant games that you were both involved in at the weekend, obviously. Varying results. We, we might start uh, with, with you, Miriam, here in, uh, on this one, the, the win over Tipperary at the weekend and obviously setting up uh, a league final. What's it like playing in a game like that where you realise that this is sort of mad, that there is scores going in left, right and centre and you eventually come out on top? Does, does it sweeten it a little bit or do you just care about the results and you don't care how it happens? Yeah, look, I, I know we won there on, on Sunday, but we were a bit disappointed with our own performance, I right. suppose, look. Heart and determination got us over the line in the finish. We were, we were very lucky to come out on top. Tipperary definitely deserved to win. And uh, yeah, it just goes to show you can't take your foot off the pedals. I know we're champions from last year, but I don't think that means that anymore. You know, we're back to square one and we have to just go back to the basics of working hard. And Sunday just showed that, that we can take nothing for granted. We need to just keep working hard. Are you seeing a similar thing in, in hurling at the moment to what a lot of people are talking about, the sort of volume of scores that, that's popping up? And obviously in your game against Clare at the weekend, that was no different to some of the spectacles we're, we're getting used to seeing recently. Yeah, yeah, they, the game has definitely gone high scoring at the moment. And um, look, we, we probably aren't happy with, with, with the amount that we can see over the weekend and just shows that we, we have plenty to build on for the next two weeks um, if we want to be competitive when we're, when we're playing the winners of Wexford and Leash. So... Look, we we have positives to take from that game, but there's um definitely plenty of things that we need to improve on if we if we want to if we want to go far in the championship. What's it like being in the middle of a defence, knowing that the game of hurling has elevated itself to a level where you're naturally going to concede a massive scoreline uh, every week? Is 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 there any frustration there at all? Ah, yeah. Look, it's it's difficult. You know, it's difficult as a back. You want to limit the other team to to as little scores as possible. You know, and. Um, if teams if teams are putting up a high score against you, you have to look at yourselves and see if you're doing enough to, to stop that. So it's definitely um it's definitely tough, but it's a, it's a great time for forwards at the moment. So it's up to us to try to get up to that level and stop them scoring as much. Uh, Miriam, then this this Sunday, obviously ma- massive night for yourselves. First of all, how looking forward uh, to it are you? Just in terms of getting back out there in front of fans. Yeah, really looking forward to it. I suppose. You know, we had no, the last time we were in Crow Park, we had no um, supporters or nothing. So it, it's great. Some of our family members and 
some people from Kilkenny and Galway will be heading up to watch the match as well. I think it's at a brilliant time, half seven, you know, people will be tuning in, hopefully, on RTE on Sunday. It'll be great for the population to get the, behind us. So, you know, it's mad to think only 89% of the our population only know, you know, don't know Camogie players' names or whatever. So hopefully now, um, you know, Sunday now will help um, get our reputation up and going again. Do you think that's changing? Yeah, I really do. I think like Little Woods Ireland, our, our main sponsors are doing phenomenal work um, just by streaming the games and all, you know, the way our families are at and put and go to our games. So it was important for them to tune in and I really believe it, it's changing and even their ads on television, you know, kind of recognising Camogie players, you know, it's great for our sport. And, you know, like we train as hard as the men, so it's important, um, you know, that we get the same recognition as them as well. It doesn't hurt as well when there is good storylines, good rivalries. This rivalry with Galway at the moment seems to be bubbling along nicely. Yeah, exactly. Look, uh, we, we've great battles with Galway and we're really looking forward to Sunday's game. It's always a, a brilliant match whenever we play Galway. We're, you know, two brilliant teams and I think it's all on the day as well. So, you know, we'll just have to see what happens on Sunday. Um, hopefully we'll come out and talk, but I'm sure Galway won't make it too easy for us. And then final word to yourself, Padraig. I guess there's probably a bit of jealousy there playing in Croke Park in front of a, a bit of a crowd. How much does hurling need these these full houses? And and how looking forward to you uh, to it are you over the next couple of months? Oh yeah, absolutely. You can't wait just to get crowds in, and it's brilliant for the girls that they get to experience that on Sunday evening. Now you'd be very jealous of it. Um, three thousand people going to watch your game. It's a long t- time since we've seen that here in Ireland, so it's absolutely brilliant. Um, they deserve it. They're getting great promotion over the last few weeks from Little Woods and stuff. So it's it's brilliant. And I'd say there's going to be a lot of people who will be mad to get tickets to that game on Sunday. And that hopefully there'll be plenty of people tuning in to watch it. Um, and hopefully things will go well. And that will mean that we'll have plenty of crowds at our games come, come championship time. Yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully a good summer of GEA in store. And just a reminder that Little Woods Ireland supporting both Camogie and Hurling for the fifth year running launched the Little Woods Ireland Camogie League Finals and All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championships as part of their 2021 Style Meets Substance campaign. Partnering with Little Woods Ireland for the launch were Miriam Walsh and Podrick Walsh, both of Kilkenny, both of Tullerone. You've been listening to them for the last little while. Miriam, Podrick, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thanks for having us. Thanks.